Many of today's high-speed networking environments are answering the call for more bandwidth by transitioning to 10 gig transmission speeds over Category 6A cabling. But how do you know if the cable is really meeting the CAT 6A performance standard? Undetected at installation, alien crosstalk problems may require you to turn off your network to test, troubleshoot, and possibly reconfigure your entire installation, which is very costly and disruptive. The only way to certify its performance is to test it at installation. Alien crosstalk testing is not hard. It's really not all that different from the testing you're already doing and won't add a significant amount of time to your job. We're going to break it down into five easy steps and show you how easy alien crosstalk testing should be. Five easy steps for 10 gig testing. Test each CAT 6A link exactly as you would CAT 6 or 5E. Select the victim cables to test. Identify the disturber cables for each victim. Test for alien crosstalk from the near end. Test for alien crosstalk from the far end. We're going to start by running our normal permanent link or channel measurements. The tests you already run on each cabling link in every new install. There's nothing new here. You're going to follow the exact same procedure you would for any new CAT 5E or 6 installation. This part of the procedure ensures that each link is performing correctly on its own. After we complete that task and have saved the results, we're ready to start alien crosstalk testing to make sure these cables aren't interfering with one another. The first step is to determine which links to analyze. It's not necessary and would be extremely time consuming to evaluate the influence of every link in the cabling installation on every other link. Instead, we'll follow a sampling plan to determine how many links should be tested. In this example, we're going to select five links for analysis. We'll call these the victim links. Here, you can see that we've already loaded the in-channel test results, and we're going to store the alien crosstalk files in the same job site folder. Project managers can do this in the office once in-channel certification has been performed, or technicians can do this planning on-site with a laptop. The first step is to sort all the in-channel test data records by length. We want to choose the longest link because it's the most susceptible to alien crosstalk interference. In addition to the length of the links, we should also pick links from the different bundles to get a good sample. If we know how our links are routed and the bundle quantity is kept to a minimum, it'll make alien crosstalk testing easier. Make sure you do not select a link at the end of your connector's row. You'll want to select a link that has at least one connector immediately adjacent to it in the patch panel. Since we need to pick five victims for this job, We'll pick the three longest links from the different bundles and the two shortest links from the different bundles to give us an optimal sample. Now we need to decide which links to choose as disturber links. We're going to analyze the combined crosstalk interference on a victim link by all its disturber links. Picking the disturber links is easy. These are the links that share the bundle with the victim and any that are terminated in close proximity, usually just above or below the victim link in the panel. Let's look at the Linkware database again, this time by link ID. We select all of our disturber links and place them with their corresponding victim links. Now the most difficult part of the job is done. It was actually very easy. Now that we've picked the links to test, we're ready to perform the test with the Fluke Network's DTX cable analyzer. First, we connect the DTX main unit to the first victim link at the panel where it will stay until we've completed the near-end and far-end crosstalk testing from this end of the link. We also connect the DTX main unit to our laptop with a USB cable. Because it's the laptop where all the calculations are performed and the results are stored. Next, we connect the alien crosstalk communication modules in the DTX main and remote units using a patch cord. Finally, we take the DTX remote unit and connect it to the first disturber link. 
You might be wondering, what about the other end of these links? They're not connected to anything. An open at the far end would create signal reflections and make the measurements invalid. So you want to plug the other ends with these terminator plugs included with your DTX Alien Crosstalk Kit. We'll also use terminators for the open end of each disturber link. Once we've plugged into the victim link and have it terminated at the far end, you don't need to touch it. We just let the Alien Crosstalk Analyzer software guide us through the home stretch. First, we launch the software. Select New. Navigate to your first victim link folder and enter your user settings. Since this is a new test, we're going to select No here. Since we're doing the near end tests, select PS A Next and hit End 1. Now press Run Test. This screen shows the Disturber Link IDs in the Linkware file. Select the first link and Next. It shows us all the connections we just made and will even run a quick diagnostic to verify that the terminations are correct and if they're not, what to fix. That jingle indicates everything is terminated correctly and in just seconds you get a clear pass or fail result. You'll actually see a lot more detail here, which can be used for further analysis. The most important thing to worry about is whether or not the test passed or failed. We see that it passed, so we'll move on to the next disturber and again select Next to run test. Each time we do this, the software shows which of the disturbers have already been tested so we can easily keep track of what's left to do. Again, it reminds us where to put the equipment and once we move it to the next disturber link, we run the test again. As you can see, this is a pretty quick process and we're going to want to repeat it for all your disturber links for this victim. When you've completed your final disturber link, the results screen shows the combined PSA next test result for the victim link from end one. This victim passes. Now the near end test of the victim link is complete and we move on to the far end testing. The setup is very similar to the near end test, except we have to move the DTX remote unit to the other end of the link. The DTX main unit connection doesn't change. In order to synchronize the main and remote DTX units, we need to connect them up to a spare link, any link between the two panels but the victim or the disturber in the test. Use a patch cord at either end. Again, we terminate the disturber at the end where the main unit is plugged in. In our software, we change the selection to PSAACRF to indicate that we're testing from the far end. And we run the test. Just like before, we get a pass or fail. And then we move through the list of disturbers. After the last disturber has been added, we get a combined far end test result. Once all of our testing is done, it's neatly documented in a printable report that contains all of the data and results. You may be wondering, is it necessary to test from both ends for both the near end and far end AXT analysis? The simple answer is not always. That is the maximum amount of testing you would need to do, but depending on your application or environment, it may not be necessary. We outline all of this in detail on our Alien Crosstalk Recommendations document, which can be found at flukenetworks.com slash alien crosstalk testing. Alien crosstalk testing might seem a little intimidating at first, but once you get the repetitive mechanics down, it's really quite simple and moves very quickly. And if you're working with CAT 6A, it's truly the only way to eliminate all doubt whether or not your cabling system is meeting the required performance criteria.